This is Talk Sport Daily. Hello, happy Tuesday, gang. Welcome to another Andy Goldstein Talk Sport Daily podcast with me, your host, Andy Goldstein. Jason Cundy is still in it. Say hello, hello to everyone. Hello, yeah, enjoy the podcast. Oh, that's nice of you. Yeah, it's very good. Oh, I haven't done it yet. Listen, nice, oh, it's going to be good. Always is. Oh, always is good. Okay. Can you hurry up and get out of the room? Bye. So I can... There he goes. And we just got to wait for the door to shut. You go in. <laughs> right, finally he's gone. We begin this decision with the fallout from the West Ham game. Of course, they beat Leicester in the Premier League. We'll hear from managers David Moyes and Brendan Rodgers very shortly. But first, this is how we reacted on TalkSport. I'm forever blowing bubble. Top of the league, West Ham into Europe this season. Perhaps it'll be the Champions League next year. West Ham four, Leicester one. A great start for us and uh, it was an incredible night at atmosphere and I don't know if people who've all been to Upton Park but I used to go there and manage against them and it felt like a really loud night at Upton Park uh, in the Olympic Stadium tonight. Maybe the team's beginning to show the show the supporters a little bit more and I think they're all going away enthusiastic but I certainly am about the support. It was a great atmosphere, it really was. History making goal, West Ham three, Leicester one and West Ham now have their greatest scorer in the Premier League era and his name is Mikel Antonio. For a player that's come out of the non-leagues, he's some player and his celebration was just magnificent there for those <laughs> who quite rightly listen to us not watching this game on the television. He ran to the side of the pitch, picked up a life-size cardboard cutout of himself and waved it about, gave himself a little ride above his own <laughs> head. What a man he is and Brilliant. what a footballer he is. I just didn't think that he'd made the right choices in the first half with the ball quite a few times, but I thought the second half he was different class. His link-up play, his positioning, he offered an awful lot for us in the second half. He was very Good. The Leicester players and staff are not happy on this near side, um, especially the players, about Perez being shown a red. Michael Oliver initially gave nothing, then there was a VAR check, he then went to look on the monitor and uh, Perez actually looks like he's in tears. But if you actually look back, he gets nudged. If he's you know, if he's looking for the free kick, he probably goes over, but because he's trying to stay on his feet and he when he's got clip, then of course he's trying to stay and he's unbalanced and then he obviously catches his ankle and when you see it slow down it doesn't look so good but you could say it was a free kick before that. It was a shocking challenge. Well you see that he looks up as well he knows what he's doing with his feet. Was he off balance? Yeah but you, you know there's still that doesn't excuse it. You know he's, he's running for the ball he's slightly off balance but that's no excuse for that challenge. You know that was it was it was a really really poor tackle that and you're right Schmeichel gave the ball away I think that may be one of the reasons why feeling a bit responsible that may well have been the case. Now, after Chelsea beat Arsenal 2 0 at the Emirates, the Gunners legend Invincible Sol Campbell has offered to fix their defence himself. What by playing in it? What if he's coming out of retirement? Adrian Durham even admitted he feels for the manager, Mikel Arteta, but doesn't think he's experienced enough for the job. We'll get the take of the former Spurs midfielder, Jeremy Ahar, but this is Danny Murphy, who was confused by the lack of changes that came from Arsenal's management. Watching it from a tactical point of view, I was so bemused. They started off okay for eight, ten minutes until Chelsea started beating the press. And there's nothing wrong with starting with a press, but when you play one of the best teams in Europe, or the best team in Europe in terms of winning the European Cup, there are times where you've got to give them the respect and sit off because they beat the press, they've gone a goal up and all of a sudden you're on the back foot. They never changed. And what happened is they got so stretched, the gaps were so big. It was amateurish, tactically, from Arsenal. They were all over the place. Right. So they were half-pressing at times and then getting played through by good players, granted. Yeah. Then they didn't have the nows to drop off. And at half-time, I was expecting them to come out and go, right, we're not going to get battered here. And then, to be fair, they did react. But Chelsea still played through them at times. The basics, I mean, you can be, you can lose, but the way we conceded some goals were too, were too easy. The reaction times of some of the defenders, you know, not backing each other up, not, uh, not assessing them aware of danger. Danger! First goal, it's just slipped across the six yard box. Get back and defend. Get back and defend. Lovely ball over on the right hand side to Reese James, and then the ball flashed across the box, and Lukaku got in front of Rob Holding and tapped in from close range. If they stick with Arteta, they are going to finish in the bottom half of the table. Look at them. They're miles off it. They've got no direction, no plan. All these young lads they've brought in are just potential, but you need leaders in the dressing room to get the best out of them. There isn't any leaders in the team. Maybe they need to change the type of player that comes through the door. Because for me, when I look at it, I feel the bite, that kind of consistency, that kind of I'm not going to lose kind of character has not gone through the door yet. Is Arteta strong enough to stand up to a, a director of football, a recruitment head, a chairman? 
a chief exec, is he strong enough? Because he's a rookie manager, a young manager. Is he strong enough to do that? Or did they need somebody stronger if this process that's ongoing at Arsenal is to be a success? Do they have the wrong man in charge? I do feel a little bit for Arteta, but I don't think he helps himself when he when he yeah. comes out and thanks the fans and all that and they, they were booing the team. I tell you what, I'd help them in defensive. Just give me a job and I'll help yeah. them out. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll tell you how to get out of a two-man press against Brentford. Now, Danny Murphy has questioned whether Anthony Martial is a bad apple in the Manchester United squad after an abject display at Southampton. We'll also hear from Jamie O'Hara, but first, it's TalkSport's chief moaner, Moni Moni, Simon Jordan, on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being a pair with the Tathan of his rival managers in the title race. I don't think anyone denies that he's got mental fortitude and to have played for Manchester United. Of course he's got mental fortitude. Of course he's got strength of character. But that's not the argument being advanced. Strength of character and fortitude can't supersede talent. They can run alongside it. Now, the argument I have is that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is probably the loveliest man on the planet. He's probably got loads of backbone and loads of character. I put him up against Tuchel. I put him up against Klopp. I put him up against Pep Guardiola. And he's a pale imitation. Goalkeeper's made another crucial save this time with his left foot. To deny Anthony Martial. Martial was shocking. Really bad performance from him. He just plays like he's not bothered whether he plays well or not. It's a weird attitude to have. Like when I used to go on a football pitch, I was just obsessed with trying to be the best player out there. Martial just plays like he doesn't care whether he's good or not. It's weird how he plays because he's got so much talent. Is he the type of squad player you want in terms of his numbers? Somebody who comes in and can score goals and make goals. Irrelevant of his body language and what you think of him. Yes. The problem is with him is that he could be a bit... I don't know him. I'm making a judgment on what I see from afar. Could he be a bit of a bad apple? Could he be a bit of a somebody who, who brings the mood down? If you can manage him as part of a squad, and yep. he isn't a problem behind the scenes, and he's a wonderful part of a squad, what but I don't get that impression that that's what this boy is looking for. But I think United's story has moved on from Anthony Martial, and I think the problem for Anthony Martial is how does that manifest itself for him? On now to a bit of Norwich City with Alex Cook and Adrian Durham, both unhappy with the Canaries seemingly being happy as a yo-yo club, going from the Premier League back to the Championship every other season. Brace yourselves, Norwich fans. It's not going to be fun. It's not uncomfortable for Norwich. It's not uncomfortable for their fans or their owners. They seem to be fine being beaten into oblivion one season in the Premier League and then winning the Championship the next season. They're absolutely fine with that. What's uncomfortable about this is not Norwich's fault, it's not the fans' fault, it's the lack of competitiveness which is not good for the Premier League. Norwich rolling over at Man City, they had a, an expected goals uh, figure of 0.04. Now you don't expect them to win, but you don't expect them to be beaten that badly. Manchester City 5, Norwich City nil. Adrian, they couldn't have asked for an easier home performance even if they tried. Norwich have just not offered anything whatsoever. That's not competitive. It's not in the spirit of competition. The Premier League has to have competition. This is a part of the reason, it's not all the reason, of course, but it's part of the reason why European Super League came to be a thing. And, and you know, it got blown out of the water, and rightly so. And please, unlike some on social media, don't think this is me saying I agree with the European Super League. We absolutely did not agree mm. with it, OK? And we're delighted that it hasn't happened. But the point is this. Those big clubs wanted to play each other because they don't get anything from playing Norwich and Brentford. Now, you and I like them playing Norwich and Brentford because of that jeopardy. Because Norwich well, Brentford beat Arsenal. Absolutely. Norwich beat Man City last season. Brentford beat Arsenal. Yeah. We know what can happen. So we love it. But the bigger clubs didn't like it. Now, thankfully, they were beaten down. I don't know what the answer is to this. Maybe parachute payments being restricted could be part of the answer. But Norwich City are running themselves in a, a way which means they will survive. They will be absolutely fine and they're going to give their fans yeah. something to shout about. You can't really have a go at that, but I don't think it helps the Premier League. Come on! Made some comments on the boot room on Sunday that our friend Brian Gunn has taken issue with. I suggested that in some ways Norwich have been cheating the system by coming into the Premier League, not really making too much of an attempt to stay there, going back down again, getting the parachute money, coming back up. And I think it's going to be the case again. Have you had any more messages from Brian Gunn or any other famous Norwich supporters? <laughs> Not directly, but Jake Humphrey uh, doesn't seem to be too happy either. So you, you're basically upsetting every 
member of the Norwich City royalty. Yeah, and if they stay up at the end of the season, I'll make a public apology. If they go down, I will be expecting apologies myself. Can't we do something more inventive? If they do stay up, you will dress up in that canary outfit and be the mascot for one of their games or something like that. Lucy, what do you think about that? Is that better? I think you should have to wear a full Norwich strip for a podcast recording with socks and everything. And shin pads. Yellow wouldn't be a flattering colour on me, but let's do it. (laughs) Come on, Norwich. Let's be up! And for more from Cookie, check out the TalkSport Game Day podcast available every Monday and Thursday on the TalkSport app or wherever you get your podcast from. Basically, where you got this one from. Now, after two weeks of a new lenient approach to refereeing in the Premier League, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer claimed the game was becoming like rugby. While the new-look Liverpool manager, oh, I don't need glasses anymore, Jurgen Klopp, said it was going back 15 years and would only appeal to those who liked, and I quote, watching wrestling. So there you go. Resting in rugby in the Premier League. Danny Murphy, a big WWE fan, just like Dean Saunders, couldn't disagree more with the pair. I was gobsmacked by Jurgen Klopp's comments. What do you want Burnley to do first and foremost? Turn up and be passive. Wooden Barnes' his game is physical. Try and out jump you, out muscle you. Yeah. I couldn't find anything going through the game again that was anywhere near even contentious. I also couldn't find anything where Matip and, and Van Dyke were screaming and shouting and pleading with the referee to make some decisions. I think everybody, well, bar those two managers, have enjoyed watching the free flow in football again. Now, the England captain, Joe Root has been speaking ahead of tomorrow's third test against India. Despite being 1-0 down in the series with three matches to play, Rooty admitted that sometimes he just has to remind himself that he's living, oh, his boyhood dream. Root goes back and he edges the ball to the third man boundary. Little leap in the air, a big punch of the right arm and fist. I'm playing for England, I'm playing test cricket. It's quite easy to stay positive in that respect. Living my boyhood dream. And I think constantly we're trying to remind myself that as well when we are having a tough day or things aren't always going on our ways. When I was 10 years old, I couldn't think of anything else I wanted to do. So I think living that boyhood dream is... uh, is one way that you can constantly keep motivating yourself to front up to the next challenge and the next day. Well, that's it. Just time to tell you that the wonderful Adrian Durham is on TalkSport 2 tonight from 6pm with kickoff. He's live at Barrow be Aston Villa with all the goals as they go in from the night's action in the Carabao Cup and a reminder that kickoff joins Talk Sport from 7pm with the full round the ground service Huddersfield take on Everton that's in the Carabao Cup second round that's live on Talk Sport 2 from 7.45 I'm back today on my show the Andy Goldstein Drive Time Show alongside Darren Goffy Goff from 4pm there will of course be another one of these Andy Goldstein Talk Sport Daily podcasts out first thing in the morning I don't know why I'm shouting maybe I'm just excited about that until then thanks for listening have a great day and above all be safe everyone be safe That was a podcast from TalkSport.